uh, here at Bon Acres uh, with Malcolm Bon, and uh, Malcolm's going to talk a bit about his farm, and we may do a little wandering around, sure. and uh, maybe at the end you could suggest uh, some advice to some young farmers coming to Salt Spring. Oh, okay. The guru that you are. Okay. <laughs> well, the uh, we do some farming, of course, as I said, with various crops. Yeah. This is such a nice spot here. Right? Yeah. It's so beautiful. Kind of a north slope, a little cooler on this side of the road, but we'll show you the south slope uh, in a bit. So does that soil heat up pretty good? Like, it actually it, does. Yeah, it does yeah, pretty good. Yeah, because yeah. we're not down in the valley right here. Yeah. The, the Salt Spring's absolutely full of microclimates. It's only just getting going, but that one... Everything's slow this year. Under the black plastic is... Uh, Three rows of peppers and three rows of eggplants and a row of tomatoes and then I got a row of pickling cukes and a row of regular cukes. And then I got a bunch of cabbage plants at various stages here. That's an early batch of corn that's where the reservoir is. Well, we spent it. three months digging. <laughs> this was about three feet deep in water down here. Wow. But he knew it was peat underneath. Oh yeah. Yeah. And those are the only good vegetable soils on yeah. Salisbury. Yeah. The rest of them are just... The guy was thinking 50 acres, first of all the labor. Secondly, there's not enough water by and large for 50 mm -hmm. years. Thirdly, the animal manure supply is nil. Right. And fourthly, the soil quality is, I mean, this is not a nice soil to work in, but it's better than most on the yeah, island. It's like a glacial till here. It's right? a glacial till. This has got too much clay. It's out. hard to find the peat bogs and peat fields. There's, on there's the only island. 50 acres and, mo and half them are in Ducks Unlimited or, or undrainable right. uh, because of the way people bought property around right. them. Yeah. 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 yeah, very but, rare. Uh, but this is this one is it shows what you can do with them. And he he could store 50 tons in the root cellar. And uh, how he figured how he filled it was when they dug the uh, potatoes in the field, they'd load the sacks into the back of a truck. Yeah. The truck would back up the loading dock, and each of the each of the bins in the root cellar had one of these five by tens. Yeah. And you lifted two of them off, and you dumped the potatoes. Oh, in. there you go. And that was it. That was it. Wow, that's yep. good. Yeah. Yep. It was in the days before front end loaders and and conveyor belts to any great extent. But that's so we use it as a vegetable sale place now. Yeah. And uh, well, you can see the corn is nicely germinating in there. Oh it's yeah. It's all machine planted. The Look how beautiful rows. that is. There. And uh, the, yeah, the, sp the spuds are just coming up on the side there. And going crossways uh, in the middle there, separating the two corn at this end, corn at that end. They've got. 19 rows of carrots, or the hills of carrots, or three rows on the right. top of each hill. Two of turnips, two of parsnips, and eight of beets. And uh, the, uh, the corn on this end is what they call a SE hybrid, which is a sugar enhanced. And it can be planted with any other corn without affecting it. And the one at the other end is what they call the SH2s, which are super sweets. They can only be planted with SH2s. They're not. They're not GMOs. They're hybrids. Right. But the the in the super sweets, not only do they enhance the sugar, but they actually pick out whether it's going to be fructose. So they modify right. the type right. of sugar. Right. So f the flavor flavors are incredible. Right. Yeah. They, when they came on the market, that uh, it was a revolution. However, they you got to have the conditions right because they don't have the best coal soil vigor. Right. But the one thing about this dark peat soil is, if there's any sunshine, it picks oh, up the yeah. heat just like yeah. that. Yeah. So but welcome the uh, just looking at this. The, the reservoir is behind. Yeah, you can if you just if you look, uh, you see the sheep on the left. There's a grove of trees yeah, there, and it's right in there. Yeah, you can see the water. Yeah, yeah, you can see it. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah. so where Dad started digging. Well, there's where the ditch crosses. You can see the, the ditch kind of goes along the bottom there. All dug by hand. Yeah, and it, he started about 100 yards into the next property. And uh, over here, there's a bit of hump in the land. Mm -hmm. And of course, these, these humps um, are actually what formed the peat swamps because right. the water dammed in behind them and eventually the peat grew right. in. It just stayed there. Yeah, so yeah. He, he ended up in here having to dig down six feet. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine throwing it there. <laughs> You know, the peat bogs are really rare on Salt Spring, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, there's, there's this one, the Bullock Lake system, unfortunately, is probably never going to get used again because some guys got water rights on the lower side of Robinson Road and they're not going to be able to lower that ditch. Right. But there's there's 12 acres in on Bruce Bryden's of this soil. Right. Uh, Cunningham's got three acres and the Bullock property had about five. 
Yeah. And, uh, it was all in cultivation 40 years ago. Yeah. Not now. And then uh, Stonecutters Lake, there's another one. Yeah. That could be used. Right. Because uh, that, most of that belongs to Daly's. Right. Uh, there's a little bit around Ford Lake. Right. There's a little bit around Blackburn Lake. And, uh, and why is the why isn't it being used? Would you say the reasons? Uh, I would say the people that owned it at the time didn't really have the inclination. Right. And, and, That's a good answer. And yeah. then okay. once yeah. and then in the Bullock Lake chain, once that permit got in for the guy, his water rights for a pond, and Ducks Unlimited got involved in the other area. That was the end of that. It's underwater basically now. But and now the interesting thing is this part from the hump here going down, you'd think that would be rich soil in the valley just like this. It's a heavy, heavy clay. Yeah. And it's just how it because just it's, not, the way it is. it's not dammed up so it never had water sitting mm -hmm. it was in here. It was a four foot deep lake. It's a little lower here too, it I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's but, so beauty, beautiful here in Hawaii. It's such yeah. a pretty piece. But here's a, this is a this is a nice piece of soil here. This is a sandy loam. It's a little light. Right. But you got a terrific south slope, and this is Andrew's pumpkin patch. He, he and my granddaughter Mia planted 9,000 seeds in here wow. two, uh, two weeks ago on Saturday. They did, they did it in six hours, wow. the two of them. How long ago? Uh, uh, be two weeks ago, a bit left there. Uh, well, there's a couple of cobras there, cherry and grapes at the other end. But cobra, the bigger ones in behind, that's the main variety. Right. They, they have a terrific flavor. Right. Now, I get those from Stokes. Actually all these seeds came from Stokes. They have a greenhouse section as well as that. The other greenhouse at the moment I got full of basil and uh, basil's going, once you start growing, your wife starts growing basil in the greenhouse she'll never put it outside again. It just, uh, it, it's been ready there now for a month and it'll be there till November. Mm, it just likes the heat, hey? Yeah, it just likes the heat. Yeah. And then the rest of it's got about 25 uh, cucumber plants. Oh wow. Well. And then we get we get a variety called Carmen, and they'll grow the English cukes. And they'll so do they grow the, Do you grow them the same on, on, a, on like the string, on the string yep, up yep, to the rebar? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Now, in the commercial industry where they got heat for a much longer season, what they'll do is you can see they're on a coil here. Yeah. As the, as these ripen, they just lower the plant and start circling the bag because the plant keeps growing up. Uh, okay. The stem keeps producing a plant. That's why there's 50 feet on those things, because obviously you can't reach up there without yeah. a ladder. And uh, well, that's a fair amount of weight once you have all those tomatoes oh yeah, in well, here, you know, be, holding off be, that. Could be 10, 20 pounds of to on each string, just yeah. like that. Yeah. So we just yeah. lower it down and yeah, you just lower it down. It keeps on growing up. <laughs> and uh, the cucumbers, um, huh. I found that the cucumbers, I, I did them in a bag one year, and, it, and it's really hard to grow them in a bag like the tomatoes. Um, Why is that? I think I probably got either too much water or too much fertilizer. And they and get... They, uh, and then the leaves just, they, they turn yellow on you and they die. And so what I do is I, I, I dig topsoil into the bottom of the greenhouse. And some manure and some perlite and mm -hmm. peat moss and I seem to have pretty good results with that. This will mostly go into winter kale, cabbage and... Um, um, well, be red cabbage, savoy cabbage green cabbage, winter varieties, and some winter broccoli, kale, Brussels sprouts, be a lot of Brussels sprouts in there. So tell me again about the rabbits, like well, how you, 